today is a very auspicious day. Spiritually very auspicious, but also very uh, sad when we lose the association of Vaishnavas. Here we sang this song, Je Anilo Prevadhan, one who brought the wealth of Prema to this world. Because he has Prema, he came to give. Je Anilo Premadhan Koruna Prachu, so overflowing with mercy, Koruna Prachu. Heno Prabhu Kothagila Acharya. But now, oh Prabhu, where did he go now? There is no greater pain than separation from Vaishnava. When Mahaprabhu asked Raya Ramananda and empowering him to answer, he asked him, what is the greatest pain? Then Raya Ramananda, by the inspiration of Mahaprabhu said, there is no greater pain than separation from Vaishnava. But in this separation of Vaishnava, one gets more contact if really he is feeling the transcendental separation it is more intense so today three very powerful Vaishnavas they disappeared from this world Rasikananda Dev Goswami he appeared in very in Midnapur district very pious family and he um, Gurudev said here that we can assume that he is a gopi or manjari in Krishna Lila because he was initiated by Shaman and the Prabhu. Uh, and it was also, uh, here it is also said he was uh, very respectful and served his parents, they were pious. And he was also married. He had wife, devoted wife named Ichamoy Devi or Ichadei from the village, Ghamtashila. And Someone share the screen. Why don't uh, do this? Who share the screen? Okay. And here also, when he was very eager to find spiritual guide. One day he was so much absorbed in meditation that he lost all external awareness, everything. Then he got wise, divine wise. You don't worry any longer. You will meet your guru today morning. Next day morning you will meet him. His name is Shyamananda. Then he was very happy. It is same, similar like our Parangurde. He also could not remain in house. He was calling Krishna that when he was studying, then he could not remain. And he asked his mother, I cannot remain. And he went to Himala. She gave permission. Then he went to Himala and for three days, three nights, he was not eating, sleeping, drinking, nothing, only calling Krishna. Then he heard that divine voice, you don't worry, your Gurudev appeared there from where you left, means Bengal or Calcutta. So then he came back. So Krishna sends Guru to us. It is already, Krishna already knows 
that is why here uh, that voice said your guru is Shamananda Prabhu. So Rasika Murari was very happy and he started to chant the name of his guru the whole night. Then in the morning, really, he got his first darshan. Shamananda Prabhu came with his associates doing kirtan and he submitted himself to Gurudev and got mantra and then he served his Gurudev and followed all instructions and fully surrendered. That is why he got all powers from his Gurudev. Here Gurudev mentioned in the book, if one he is a very good disciple, then he will become good teacher also. Because he will receive all knowledge and everything and all power from Guru. So he got and he became favorite disciple and he had such spiritual power. He was rescuing many Muslims, atheists, sinners, everyone. He was rescuing even one Muslim became very envious of him uh, because he was becoming famous. So he sent one mad elephant to disturb the Kirtan and to, to harm the devotees. But when that elephant came near to Rasikananda by his influence, that elephant also got pacified. He became peaceful because in him also Atma is there. So coming in contact then uh, seeing that that elephant also now submitted to him, then he lift his ear up, that cover of ear he lift, and he spoke Mahamantra into his ear, and he initiated him, that elephant. And now this elephant became devotee. Atma is Atma. So Atma became devoted to Krishna, so he, that same elephant, he became devotee and he was serving Vishnu and Vaishnavas. According to his capacity, he was serving. And seeing this, that Muslim also got astonished and he also came and surrendered to Rasikananda. He also became his disciple, so very powerful. And Shamananda Prabhu entrusted him with that deity in Gopi Pallapur, I think. Uh, means he, yes, Gopi Pallapur, Gobinda Diti, he gave to him. And then he went from Bans Dahaner Jaleshwar and from there, that was a place also Mahaprabhu visited when he was going to Puri. So he went there and then from that place he went to Remuna, to Gopinath, Kirchor Gopinath Diti, with his seven disciples and they were doing Kirtan all the way. So there in Kirchor Gopinath, he entered into Gopinath Diti. This is how he disappeared and there was no body, transcendental body, to make samadhi, so only Pushpa Samadhi they could make. So one can think, oh, this is mythology. How one person can enter into one stone? We are thinking like, we have no faith in Diti. But, Nam Vigarha Sarupti Nekrupti in Vedanahitin Chidanandarupti. Name, Diti and Krishna, they are one and the same. All transcendental, full of bliss. So, and also Nam Rup Gun Lila of Krishna and Dham, they are all non different from him. So, Gopinath is, everything is there inside Gopinath. Namrup, Gun, Lila, everything Dham. So, Rasikananda just entered into Gopinath, entered into Dham, Vrindavan Dham. But we have no belief. We think this is mythology. But this is how he disappeared from this world and his disciples also. So, Samadhi Mandirs are there. So on today's day, there are some other incidents, but we don't have so much time. Uh, I am remembering his deity there in Radha Shamsundar Mandir in Vrindavan. There is a cave 
bhajan kutir of shamananda you have to go down by steps very narrow and there you have shamananda and rasikananda and it is written there on board keep quiet shamananda prabhu and rasikananda prabhu are in bhajan in bhajan so you keep quiet so i'm remembering his deity there in the bhajan kutir and bowing down and praying for his causeless mercy also today our previous guru shri jagana das babaji maharaj disappeared from this world he is also appeared from very respectable family then he went to brindavan and was doing bhajan and he became leader of all the vaishnavas everyone accepted him he was a perfected so sida jagannathas babaji he was doing bhajan for some time also there in surjakund i saw his bhajan kutir there there he gave many teaching also someone once gave some money he threw it there inside then jagannathas babaji played the pastime of being very ill and no one could understand why then somehow when they they searched they saw that one rupee there so they removed that one rupee then he became uh, healthy again some fever or something he got so he he taught his disciples by his own example that one should not uh, have this material opulence and these things that will not be helpful for a bhajan if you renounced everything then you should not be connected with money and these things and so many other teachings there in surja kund because he took babaji besh from madhusudan das babaji maharaj sida so then one day he was begging chapati from one lady sweeper in brindavan then disciples they were speaking among themselves why gurudev is begging from this sweeper class lady that is low according to our eyes lady and also sweeper class so why gurudev is begging from her if he could if he told us we can make chapati for him then jagannathas babaji knows everything so he understood what they are thinking so one in harikatha he said actually i'm not fit to stay in brindavan because i have no proper vision of the prajavasis i am committing offenses to them they are rishi munis who came here to brindavan to do bhajan but i'm thinking they are sweepers but actually they are cleaning the pathway for other ani but i am unable to see so i am committing offense to brajavasi so i have no right to stay here in brindavan so i will have to go to navadip dham their offenses are forgiven so he went from brindavan to navadip but when he was still in brindavan uh bhakti vinod thakur met him there also and in in kolkata also in some other places so our gurudev also was very fond of telling that to to experience they renounced their house and came to brindavan to do bhajan so they took shelter of jagannathas babaji and he said yes it is very good now you should work in the garden you should sow vegetables and all this then they were surprised why we left our house we came to brindavan to do bhajan like harinam and bhagavatam this why we have to do this work we left 
then they could not speak to Jagannathas Babaji. Then they came to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, knowing that he's very dear to Jagannathas Babaji. So they told him, our Gurudev does not engage us in bhajan, but in work. So how? We cannot understand. We came for bhajan. Then Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, oh really? He told you, oh you are so fortunate. I am not that fortunate. You got direct order from Gurudev for service. Gurudev is directly in contact with Krishna. He's directly serving him. And he gave you order that is for the service of Krishna. Because he knows now your senses are not under your control and mind also. So if he will now say to you, you sit and chant, then your mind will wander here and there and you, you will not be able to serve Krishna properly and Harina. And also Bhagavatam you cannot understand now with such uh, conceptions without surrender. So he knows your present eligibility. So he gave you the service of Krishna. Now you will engage all your senses and mind in do, working in the garden, which is not ordinary garden. It belongs to Krishna. Jagannandas Babaji Maharaj is maintaining that for Krishna. So when you will grow that vegetables, then he will offer to Krishna and your energy will be engaged for the service of Krishna. Thereby you will purify your senses and mind and everything. And while you are working in garden for Krishna, you can also chant simultaneously when watering and all this. You can chant, not with mala, but uh, like this. So you are very fortunate. So he made them understand that real, actual, bona fide guru engages his disciple according to his present uh, level for the service of Krishna. So we should not doubt or consider or think about the orders of guru. He knows everything, what he's doing. So following the order of Guru is actual bhajan. And uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur met and they did Kirtan there for in Kadashi and Jagannandas Bhavaji Maharaj was very ecstatic and that ecstasy entered into all devotees present. They were crying, they were uh, wildly chanting and dancing because of Babaji Muharaj, all mood entered into them. And he also met him in Calcutta. There he blessed Prabhupada. He told, you are good in astrology, so you, you should make this Vaishnava calendar. And he also told about the appearance day of Vishnu Priya is on that Shukla Panchami. So he blessed him. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur took his photo in Calcutta. I think in Calcutta or some other place, but there is only one photo of Babaji Maharaj made by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. It is here in the book, you can see. And then you also know that Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he wanted to go to Brindavan after retirement. Then he went to take permission of Tarkeshwar Mahadev Shiva in near Krishna Nagar. So when he came to him and offered bell leaves and water and everything, then Tarkeshwar Mahadev told him, you want to go to Brindavan, but you have to work here in near your home place, that Navadip Dham is not different from Vrindavan. There is much work to be done there. So I'm not giving you permission to go to Vrindavan. <laughs> you have to do work here. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur understood that, of course, this is Lila. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur first bought that Surabi Kunja house. Not Svananda Sukadakuna, Surabi Kunja. It is now the devotees also got that place also. 
from the family of Bhakti Thakur. And now one big mat is there. And they, they will show you handwriting of Bhakti Thakur. And also they will tell you that from here Bhakti Thakur saw Jogapi. So I was having doubt. I did not believe when I heard this. Why? Because in Gurudev's book, it is stated that when Bhakti Thakur was in Kulia, in one Dharamshala there on the other side, from there he saw Jogapit, that light and everything. So I, I rejected. I thought maybe they are, it is my offense. I thought maybe they want to make like more popular that place. So that was my thinking because based on that information. But just two days ago, uh, when I was hearing Shilashidhar Maharaj's Harikata, he told that first he saw from that side, from Kulia, he saw it. And then later on, again, he saw it from Surabi Kunja. Then I thought, oh, I committed offense. So from both places he saw, so they're saying right there. And that Surabi Kunja house, Babaji Maharaj also came there to visit. Bhakti Thakur, and they made a big Sankirtan festival there. So that is very important place. Later on, he bought that Sananda Sukada Kunja, where his Samadhi Mandir is there. So this house then belonged to his sons and the grandsons and like this, but now, maybe five years ago or something, again, devotees, they got that place. So, you know, when Bhakti Thakur saw that vision and then also he checked all old maps and he asked the people and all this, then they told him, yes, Mayapur is there. Then he also got some indication there. And when everything was fixed, then he also invited Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj to that place. And Babaji Maharaj was very old they had to carry him and he could not see anything because his eyelids were down. If he wanted to see anything, then he had to lift. So old, 125 years that time. So he was carried there. But when he came there to Jogapit, that time there was no temple, only hill, little hill and some tulsi and tree. Then he jumped out from that basket where they were carrying and he started to dance madly. Jai Sachinanda and Gaurahuri. Then everyone was astonished. He cannot walk. He cannot see anything. How now he is dancing here and jumping and everything? Then they said, Babaji Mohan, what, what is happening? Then he said, you don't see? You, you don't see? Mahaprabhu is dancing with his own associates here. He's dancing. And he was chanting Jai Sachinanda Gaurakari. So then he said, yes, this is the actual place of Mahaprabhu's appearance. So he told, there should be deities here installed and temple made. Gaur and Vishnu Priya and Lakshmi Priya and Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra and Nimai. And then he also uh, revealed that Shriva Sangan, where is Shriva Sangan? He said there Panchatattva should be installed. So he discovered, confirmed that place by his divine vision. So here you will find uh, there is one Ashtaka for him and many teachings here Gurudev gave in a book you can read. He did not like these new mantras, Gaur, Nita, Radha, Pavekri, Hare Krishna, this he did not allow. He only allowed Maha Mantra and Panchatata Mantra. That is Nama uh, Rasabhas and the Shuddha Nam, everything he was explaining. He was doing bhajan there in Kulia. His Samadhi Mandir is there in Bhajan Kutir. Bhakti Thakur also made some service there. And then 
he disappeared on today's day. And Bhakti Thakur wrote through his divine vision Let me find. Yes, on Wednesday, at last was celebrated with Great Vishnu Priya. Hmm. Das Babaji Maharaj's disappearance took place on the Shukla Pratipa, that is today, Falguna. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote of it in Sajjan Tushan at 10 o'clock in the morning of the 14th of Falguna in uh, Bengali era, in the Bhajan Kutiri in Koladvip, in Navadip town, the old general of the Vaishnavas went to his eternal abode. Siddha <coughs> Babaji Mahashai went to the spiritual world leaving this world in darkness. Our <clears throat> our mundane eyes will no longer be able to see his ecstatic dancing in Kirtan. May he bestow his blessings on us from his place in the eternal abode. Those who realize soul, they can see this. The Guru is eternal. So may he bestow his grace from there. And there also here Gurudev mentioned that after the disappearance of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, Prabhupada was feeling depressed. How I will fulfill their desires? Then one day, he got that Swapna Samadhi in dream. He got that vision, divine vision, that Pancha Tattva and six Gosamis and Guru Parampara and Jagannath Das Babaji, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gurkishur Das Babaji going. And they spoke to him, why you are depressed? You preach everywhere. Then he said, how I can preach? I have no people, I have no money, I have no knowledge, nothing. How I will preach? Then Mahaprabhu said, no. We will send everything. Everything is waiting for you. People, money, knowledge, everything is waiting for you to call. You just go on. You start preaching. We are at your back. You spread everywhere. They encouraged him. All, Jagannath Das Babaji also, everyone. Bhakti Thakur, Mahaprabhu, Sivisus, everything, everyone, full Guru Parampara, they said yes. Then he, he was changed that time, Prabhupada. He had few disciples already at that time. They, they told he was totally different after getting that vision. And then he started preaching all over the world. So I'm remembering Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Samadhi there in Kulia, Kuladi. I went there many times. I'm remembering that his deity is there, Samadhi. So I'm going down to him and praying his causeless mercy. Today is also disappearance day of our Paranguru Dev. Uh, he was preaching everywhere under the order of Prabhupada. Volcanic energy, every seva he would complete. And he preached all over India. Very uh, widely. Then after, he played some pastime of sickness. Then at that time, Doctors told him, you cannot speak much. But at that time, our Gurudev brought one, his disciple who took Harinam initiation just recently, some days before. 
So Gurudev, our Gurudev requested Param Gurudev that he came from Chandigarh to Calcutta. He wants to hear some of your Harikata. Please speak something to him. Then Param Gurudev at that time said, OK, call everyone. From the mat, everyone. So they all came, all Brahmacharis and everyone came. What is this? He's calling everyone to his room. So at that time, you know, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Hrishikesh Maharaj, Gurudev's god brother. He wrote down this. He knew how to write very quickly. So he noted down this Antimbani, last message. So Parangurdev was seeing that disciple, new one, but at the same time he was speaking to all. I am not well, and the doctor has warned me not to speak too much. It is quite possible that I will not stay much longer in this world. I am telling you that to engage in a proper practice of devotional service, you must be fixed in the worship of the ultimate object of your devotion. When a woman is not faithful to her husband, when she loves someone else, she cannot give herself to his service, to husband's service. Infidelity and exclusive devotion cannot go together. For this reason, a faithful and devoted wife will never allow anyone to take the place of her husband, nor will she criticize anyone else. She will not condemn her brother-in-law, her mother-in-law or her father-in-law or anyone else who is related to her husband, but will rather give each of them his or her due respect. In the same way, if you wish to advance in devotional service, Worship Krishna alone. Do not criticize the other demigods and demigoddesses, but think of them as servants of Krishna and give them their due respect in that consciousness. But be careful to never give them the place which is due to the ultimate object of your devotion. I am giving you this instruction. Give this matter a little thought. You are a competent person, you are highly qualified, but you don't understand this tradition yet. So Ananya Krishna Bhakti, one pointed devotion to Krishna with due respect to all in relation to him and praying, but not thinking demigods all are same like this. In the Gauriya Sampradaya, in the lineage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the religious tradition of devotion to Krishna, dedicated devotees worship Krishna exclusively. If you put other gods and goddesses on the same level as Krishna, you are making a mistake. Don't forget this. Not all gods and goddesses are equal, not even all avatars of Vishnu. Ete Changsha Kalak Punksha Krishnas to Bhagavan Swayam. After discussing all the different avatars, Matsya, Kurma, Ram, Nrishinga, etc., Vedavya says that none of these avatars is Krishna himself. Some of them are expansions, some are partial manifestations, but Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jar Bhagavata Hoita Anir Bhagavata Soyam Bhagavan Shabder Tahate Sata from Chaitanya Charitamrita. The epithet Soyam Bhagavan means original Supreme Lord can only be used for him from whom the characteristics of Godhead are derived. Other avatars are getting from him. No one is equal to Krishna. Everyone should keep this in mind and worship Krishna exclusively and with dedication. Devotion will not increase by making a great sound and fury. Externally, uh, uh, no. How much you are devoted from your heart. Not that very loudly you will chant and you are thinking, uh, yeah, you are a great devotee. No, how much you, from your heart, you are chanting that. How much you have devotion, not external loudness. I am devotee of Krishna. I am devotee of Krishna. Everyone should remember this. 
we will not condemn any other gods or goddesses, but will pray to them to give us the blessing that we remain fixed on our supreme object of worship, Krishna. I have registered the mat. The mat is no one's personal property. But that doesn't mean that each of us becomes boss or becomes indisciplined. By doing so, this life will have been wasted. Therefore, a management scheme is necessary for the proper running of the mat. One person will be named a charjo, he will be the headman or president. When I am gone, one person will take my place. Who will that be? My spiritual master did not like the idea that there should be a vote to decide the matter. To elect an acharya is not in accordance with the principles of Hari Bhakti. God himself will decide who is the acharya. The acharya is the person who is most dear to the Lord. Who will make that decision? The proper arrangement is when the Lord himself says, this person is the one who is most dear to me. Therefore, the rule of the disciplic succession is that the choice should come from above. The correct process is that the order should be given from higher up. From the worldly point of view, everyone can get together to elect a leader, but the correct process is that the Lord himself indicates which devotee is filled with love for him and he makes him the acharya. This is the process approved by scripture. When Srila Prabhupada means Bhakti Siddhanta Sarastakuru was exhibiting pastimes of illness, he asked the solicitor Mr. J. N. Basu to write up a constitution. We heard that the constitution could be made according to one of two methods, by nomination or by election. Finally, the constitution was written according to the later method. But Srila Prabhupada did not like it and he rejected it. I and two or three others were personally present when it happened. You cannot decide who is a sadhu, an acharjo or realized soul by taking a vote on the matter. Someone will say one thing, another something else, and the debate will simply go on. Therefore, the proper method is that the Lord himself will choose which person will be honored with the position of a charge. The scripture enjoins us to respect this process. This process is not followed only in the Gauriya Sampradaya. It can be seen in every Vaishnava Sampradaya, the Ramanuja, Madhva, Nimbarka and Vishnu Sami lineages. This is the way that the disciplic succession is maintained. Therefore, the process ordained in the disciplic succession must be followed. I have therefore discussed with my senior god brothers who are a part of the Gauriaman Brotherhood, and I have decided to make Sriman Bhakti Balaptirta Maharaj my successor and president in my absence. When I have gone, that does not give you he Parangurdev discussed discuss with Srila Shidhar Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Kumu Chanta Gosai Maharaj uh, and Krishna Das Babaji and Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj and those who were at that time. And Srila Parangurdev asked Srila Shidhar Maharaj whom I should make a charge of. Then Shidhar Maharaj said, no need to make him. He is already ready made. Other than mate, no need to make him. And he's a good name. name. Already ready mate, a charge. When I have gone, that does not give you all an excuse to behave just as you please. The defining characteristic of a Vaishnava is following a devotee. The highest order devotee is the one who follows the footsteps of a devotee for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. The Lord's blessings follow the blessings of the devotee. When a devotee is merciful to someone, the Lord's mercy follows. This is the essence of my instruction to you. Please follow it. I have written in more detail elsewhere. 
it will not be correct if you try to expel someone out of the mud as soon as there is some discord. That will result in chaos. You first have to explain and try to clarify the situation. If that still doesn't work, then give the devotee who is causing problems some money and a letter and send him to another mud. Do not act impetuously, but try to work together and follow the person who has been made leader. It is not proper to ignore his commands and to do as one pleases. One has to follow the directions of the temple commanders. All his commands are given for the service of the Lord. Bear that in mind. I want to say one more thing. We have come here to engage in devotional service to Krishna. There are three principal impediments we have to watch out for. The first is the desire for sense gratification. The first obstacle to devotional service is kamaka, gold. The greed to accumulate lots of money. Your attention, your attachment should be fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. If you become attached to anything else, you will fall down. You should not think that because outsiders will not understand, you should save money for a rainy day. Mendicants beg. That is their duty. But they should turn whatever money they collect over to the mat. And that is on the same day. The temple managers should note that they must arrange for treatment if any temple devotee falls ill. If necessary, they should borrow money, but they must see that the devotee is taken care of. I can remember a time in the month when we didn't even have money for groceries. Then I borrowed money from someone without telling any of the devotees and went and bought food from the market. Only Udaran Prabhu knew about it. Udaran Prabhu would also go to a householder's place and borrow money from him. The householder was Govinda Babu. He's also a disciple of Prabhupada. If Govinda Babu didn't have any money, he borrowed it from his wife. Later, I paid all the money back. How many people know about that? So treatment should be taken care of. Devotees should be taken care of, not neglected. Taken care of. Shripad Gosami Maharaj, Shripad Nemi Maharaj and I did all the collecting. I would put on a waistcoat and would go out to collect. Then I would come back and give all the money to the temple. Shrimad Bhakti Pradip Tirtha Maharaj, Jajabar Maharaj and Shridhar Maharaj would accompany me. Whenever they needed something, I would buy it. But I never spend the temple collection money for myself. When I was at the Kolkata Mat, that is Ulta Danga and then Bambazar Gauri Mat, I would say to Kunjada, Kunja Babu, is there any cloth in the mat? If there is, let me have one. But I would never ask for anything that I did not need, just for pleasure. So, to what is needed, that is that should be accepted. Not more than that and not less than that. What is necessary for our service to Krishna. That is Jukta Vairagya. None of you should set aside money that was collected for the temple. That will disrupt your devotional life. It doesn't really matter to the mat if you decide to hold some of the money for yourself because the mat is protected by Krishna, the devotees, the Vaishnavas. But if you try to build up a savings account with that money, your spiritual life will go to hell and you will not last long in devotional service. So please don't set money aside for your personal use. Give everything to the temple manager. If there is any problem, tell the temple manager. 
the desire for money is an obstacle to devotional service. The next obstacle is association with women. Both direct association and subtle association are a hindrance. It goes without saying that you don't engage in gross sexual activity, but you shouldn't even think about it. Because we have given up everything to come here and engage in the service of the Lord. The third obstacle is the desire for personal aggrandizement. Shila Gurudev wrote, means Prabhupada, Kanaka Kamini Pratishta Bhagini, Chari Ache Jare Sei To Vaishnav, Sei Anasakta Sei Shudavakta Sangsar Tatai Pai Parabhap. Someone who has given up the tigresses of gold, woman and fame is a true Vaishnav. He is unattached and a pure devotee. He has overcome the illusory power of the material world. Prabhupada here compares the desires for wealth, woman and fame to a tigress. The desire for fame and good reputation are very strong and problematic. But even someone who does not seek fame finds that it comes to him of its own accord when he engages in true service to the Lord. People naturally give him their respect. People will always give respect to a true devotee. Pratishtar bhaya puri gelo polaya Krishna preme pratishta chole sange goraya. Madhavendra puri ran away, afraid of being distracted by fame. But when one has love for Krishna, fame flows alongside him. So you avoid these three obstacles. It is not an easy thing to do. For they draw the mind. The conditioned soul lives for money, woman and fame. They are anarthas that remain to a greater or lesser extent in the mind of the practitioner but we should not tolerate their presence or approve of them. According to advancement of votary, the anarthas are removed. But uh, ordinary conditioned souls, not sadhakas, their life is based on these three. They, that is their target. Tirta Maharaj means our Gurudev cannot always stay here in Calcutta Mat. So Jagamohan Prabhu has to run the mat. That is temple mat rakshak in Calcutta mat was Jagamohan Prabhu, Prabhupada's disciple. Don't be offended because our Gurudev will have to travel around to preach. Don't be offended if I'm rough with you. Forgive me. Vaishnavas are my object of worship. I want to serve all of you. Because Parangurdev said in his appearance day, I have four gurus. One is Supreme Lord, original guru, then Prabhupada, my Diksha guru, then all Vaishnavas, and even my disciples. They are also my gurus. They are also doing guru uh, function. Why? Because they are always seeing what their guru is doing. So I have to be very careful how I behave, what I do, everything. So they are always watching and they will immediately detect if something is wrong or something. So they are actually acting as gurus to me. So that is why he said, please forgive me. I, oh, I, uh, Vaishnavas are my object of worship. I want to serve all of you. Gurudev explained, no real guru thinks I am guru. Never. His target is always to satisfy Krishna. He, Gurudev gave example, there is one uh, father has five sons. So one son got lost somewhere and he's having trouble. Then some of those other sons finds him 
and he brings him back to father. Then father will be very happy. So like that, a uh, bona fide guru, he thinks to satisfy Krishna, not to enjoy disciples or to own them or something. But he sees they are sons of Krishna, they are here. So if I bring them back, then Krishna will be happy. So once they accept the path of devotion, they also become Vaishnavas. They are worshipable. Like Srila Siddhar Maharaj explained, when you pick some flower, then you offer to the lotus feet of Krishna. Now when it is offered to the lotus feet of Krishna, then you take that same flower and put on your head. Like that, when, when jivas become engaged in the service of Krishna, they are offered to him, they also become worshipable for Guru also. He cannot exploit them or own them or like here. That is why Paranguru said, please forgive me. I don't want to be rough with you. You are all my object of worship. Worship the Lord with out of affection is giving instruction, out of affection. Worship the Lord with unflinching dedication. Don't stop worshiping him, no matter what situation you are in. This is my prayer to you, my appeal and my instruction, for all three. <laughs> Prayer, appeal, and instruction. Chant the holy name in all circumstances. Worship Krishna always. Always respect the best Vaishnava and don't hesitate to do so. May all auspic auspiciousness follow you all. Bancha Kalpa Tarubhascha Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Pritanan Papa Nebhyo Vaishnava Namo. If we hesitate to respect the best Vaishnava, means I'm thinking I'm the best Vaishnava. That is the greatest obstacle in the ocean. So then Srila Gurudev's disappearance on Tuesday, February 27, 1979, at 9 a.m. in the midst of the singing of the holy names, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was there also. Srila Gurudev entered the eternal pastimes of the Lord at the time of his morning pastimes with Radha. He left the God, his God brothers and disciples in an ocean of grief. It was also the disappearance day of Jagannath Das Babaji and Rasi Kananda Dev Kosami and the first day of the bright fortnight. Srila Gurudev was in his own room at the Kolkata Mat, situated at 35 Satish Mukherjee Road. That bed is still there, you can see. At four o'clock in the afternoon on the same day, the devotees left Kolkata with his transcendental body in the accompaniment of the holy names and came to Mayapur where he was placed in Samadhi at the end of the night according to the scriptural directions. The officiating priest at his Samadhi festival was Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj and on March 1st, 1979, a festival of separation was held in his honor at the headquarters of the Sri Chaitanya Goryamat at Ishudyan in Mayapur. On Thursday, March 22, 1979, a memorial assembly was held in the Sankirtan Hall at the Kolkata Mat on 35 Satish Mukherjee Road under the direction of Paribrajaka Charjo Trinandisami Srila Bhakti Hridoy Bongosai Maharaj. The guest of honor was the publisher of the Amrita Bazar Patrika, Tushar Kanti Ghosh. Many of Srila Gurudev's god brothers and leading citizens of Kolkata were present at the assembly. There is that recording is still there. You can find on Bibi Tirta how Srila Bon Gosai Maharaj spoke with tears in his eyes, always crying because they were preaching together before in young age, Madras Goryamat. And Bon Maharaj said, 
we are all God brothers, but we somehow we deviated from the teaching of Prabhupada. But Madhav Maharaj, he fully, he did not change anything. He fully did. And he said, you follow Tirtha Maharaj, Bon Maharaj also said, and means Gurudev. And our Gurudev also told that Srila Bon Maharaj ordered them at that time that you also have to continue this. How your Gurudev followed all instructions of Prabhupada in total and no change, nothing, everything that you have to do also. This is my order to you. You, you should uh, preserve this. I heard this directly from Gurudev, he told me. And Gurudev also told in Mayapur, when my Gurudev disappeared in Kolkata, then he came here and Gurudev showed to Samadhi there of Param Gurudev. Then Gurudev said, I will also come here. One of the here,